Good morning, Benji. Oh, hey guys, how are we going? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, mate. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Just kind of getting going here. Um, morning in Australia, so it's 9 a.m. Just got the kids off to school. So I'm just kind of getting myself set up and going to start the day with it. <laughs> How you guys? So what, what better way to kick off the day? Great. Okay, there in Australia would be a Wednesday morning. Yes, that's right. Right. Here is uh, 8 p.m. in Argentina. A it's winter hard. night. Very, very, very cold. Very cold. It's, it's winter here for us as well, but it's, it's not a bad day. Um, no, here is uh, extremely uh, frozen. Very cold. Well, Benji, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you very much because I know you are very busy. Uh, no, the idea is to have a conversation uh, between two projects, Ratsdao y Sedao Cardano, and Algoana is the number one NFT project on Algorand. And is uh, also a DAO. So we we have we speak like I, I think twice, Benji. We we starting a relationship, uh, a possible um, collaboration, a partnership between Ratsdown and Algoana. And the idea is to have a, a relaxed conversation as we were on a coffee shop or on a bar discussing crypto, blockchain, Cardano, Algorand, DAOs, uh, knowing a little bit e each other and also allowing everyone who wants to speak at any time can I can we can give them the possibility to speak, to ask questions, uh, whatever. But that's the idea, a relaxed talk uh, between the members of, of both projects and Cardano members and, and Algorand members. That sounds brilliant. Um, yeah, I love it, mate. Um, I think it's, it's great. I like the, the relaxed approach. Um, I've done a few Twitter spaces recently and you kind of, I don't know, sometimes you feel like you're being grilled, you know, like pumped with questions. So I think just to be able to have a chat, um, and for, you know, for the people from Algorand, I think there's a lot that we can learn, especially around what you're doing with the DAO and how things are working over on Cardano. And, and likewise, hopefully there's some things that we can offer um, that maybe, you know, you guys haven't seen on Cardano, but are, are happening on over on Algorand. I'm definitely a big believer in like a multi-chain future. I don't think there's going to be one chain to rule them all. And I, I just find like these opportunities to talk with other projects and people from other communities, other chains, always super valuable. And I don't know, like something exciting always comes out of it, right? You always learn something that maybe, you know, a different perspective or a way of doing things. So yeah, super, super excited to, to chat with you, man. Absolutely. One of the things, there are many things in common between Algorand and Cardano. I I am 37 years old. I started on crypto since <clears throat> one year ago, something like that. 
We started with Bitcoin, <coughs> Ethereum, Cardano, and I love to explore other blockchains to, to see what's happening there and what uh, cool things are building in other projects. And I has been surprised for the many things in common that Algorand and Cardano has. Uh, and one of the things is specifically the interoperability that uh, both blockchains promote. You know, there are uh, Bitcoin, maybe there are the Bitcoin maximalists who says, okay, the only thing that's uh, worth on e crypto is Bitcoin and any other projects are scams. Uh, or Ethereum, who some Ethereum maximalist wants to be the only <coughs> interoper um, smart contract blockchain and that everyone has to be EVM compatible and stuff like that. And then Cardano uh, and Algorand saying, no, no, the, the future is interoperable uh, between uh, blockchains. So Cardano wants to understand uh, Algorand and, and, and other projects and, and build cross chains, bridges, and things that can uh, allow people to live in an interoperable future, and also with the with the traditional financial system and with the traditional organizations. And I think that is something that Algorand and Cardano shares. Also, the scientific approach, the academical approach that uh, probably things takes a little longer, but uh, the idea of doing things right uh, with the scientific approach and not to rush on things because here there is a lot of money, there are savings of a lot of people, companies, uh, individuals, whatever. So uh, blockchain has a, a huge responsibility. Um, but I I would like to 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 know a little more about Algoana. <clears throat> we know Algoana that is the the first, uh, the number one uh, Algorand project on secondary market sales, and it's like the blue chip of Algorand. Something like in Cardano would be the space bats. I think you guys had a sale for more than. 200,000 uh, US dollars and that I also know that you contribute to to plant trees and you have a a lot of, of trees already planted and you want to, to plant also more trees and that you also are a DAO or are a different DAOs because on Algorand Discords, I, I saw that there are like different DAOs that uh, I Weiru DAO, Sescap DAO, Goana Step DAO. It's like inside of Algoana are different DAOs, or Aldo, Algoana is a DAO. Could, could you explain me a little bit of about the project and about uh, if you are a DAO and, and what uh, do you think about DAOs and how do you organize as a DAO? Awesome, mate. Yeah, loads to unpack there. So to give you some background on the Goana project, first of all, we launched um, almost 12 months ago now. So it was kind of the middle of September 2021. Um, at the time, I'd kind of been following the crypto space for a couple of years. I'd come across Algorand. I was like, it got me really excited um, as a technology, as a blockchain. Um, I really liked the approach, the way things were going, how things were being done. Um, it was, you know, it seemed to tick all the boxes. It was fast. It was very cheap to use. It was scalable. Um, so I was like, this is this is really interesting. And around the same time, you know, NFTs had been kind of exploding through the first half of last year, particularly on Ethereum. Um, and I was like, right, I want to kind of launch um, an NFT project here on Algorand. Um, kind of watching the space at the time, I I definitely seen there was an opportunity for kind of for a sort of project style approach to a project um, where, you know, I guess kind of a lot of the things that we take for granted now in terms of an NFT, like it, in terms of an NFT project, but they weren't kind of the norm back then. Um, you've got to remember 12 months in crypto is an awful long time. So just doing some of the really basic stuff like, 
you know, building out um, a website so people could explore the entire collection um, and see all the different traits um, that were going to be part of it before the mint happened. Um, have yeah, like, you know, just literally having a website, having a social media, taking that kind of professional approach um, at the time was quite progressive. Um, but again, like now, it, it seems super normal. So we launched um, just under twelve months ago, and we had a really simple goal. Um, at the time, there was a lot of negative press around crypto, particularly like Bitcoin, you know, coming from mining, Bitcoin's really bad for the environment, NFTs are, are a big source of pollution, they're a scam, and we kind of wanted to play our part in changing that narrative. So we just thought, right, we're at, like Algorand's um, a carbon negative blockchain. So like Cardano, it's um, proof of stake, it uses a very low um, amount of energy to run. And any energy that they do use, they more than offset through carbon credits. So it's actually kind of a carbon negative blockchain in that it, by running, it actually reduces the amount of carbon. Yes, because, because on, and it's interesting. This is interesting. On, <clears throat> on Algorand, tell me if I am wrong, because I know a little bit about Algorand, is pure proof of stake. <clears throat> and you stake only by having algo which is the native token in your wallet there are no staking pools uh, on cardano we have staking pools uh, is our robot proof of stake so you can build your own staking pool and you can validate blocks on the blockchain by have by being a staking pool operators and uh, having a staking pool so the rewards goes to the staking pool and it then is distributed between the staking pool operator and the delegators to the staking pool. It is safe yeah. because you have in your wallet, for example, I am. A, we have a, 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 our staking pool is one mate, number one mate. And you have you, you, a ADA in your wallet <clears throat> and you delegate on one mate and you receive rewards but the ADA is always in your wallet. You can use, uh, for for example, for purchase an NFT. Uh, and if the pool is compromised, your ADA will never be compromised. Uh, but apparently on Algorand is even more uh, like decentralized or something like that, because on Cardano we have uh, like more, more than 3,000 uh, pools. So the concept of Algorand is that if someone wants to attack the blockchain, if someone wants to attack Cardano, you you go behind uh, to destroy these 3,000 staking pools. But on Algorand, it's like the algos uh, process the, the blocks. It, it, there aren't staking pools. You, what you can do is you can build your own. I am right. Maybe I'm, I, I said something wrong no 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 you're, you're 100 percent right there so yeah on algorand it's um all of the algos on the chain um become part of the validation process and i'm i'm not i'm not a, a very technical person i guess it comes to more of the the creative side um with nft mm -hmm. but there's basically um if you look at the name like the the random part so it's algo rand and that actually stands for random raw randomization and as part of this pure proof of stake uh, method um, of securing the blockchain, is they're randomly selecting um, blocks or wallets um, and algos to become like validators. So there's no one knows where you know which ones are going to be approving the blocks um, at any point, and that contributes to some of the security. But I think you've raised a really interesting point, um, and I think this idea of um, staking pools that we see on cardano um that has kind of and again please correct me if i'm wrong but like that's kind of incentivized the users really to become very vocal advocates um for the blockchain and has really contributed to driving like marketing exactly um, yeah absolutely yeah yeah because think, yeah, uh, for example great. One mate needs to have delegators, and, and all the staking pools needs delegators. So this is like an incentive for, uh, how to say, 
to make YouTube videos, to have a, an active Twitter account, and to spread the word about Cardano. It's like always, anytime you decide something, it's like you incentivize some things and you, um, it's a decision. Maybe Algonand is, uh, is more safe, it's, it, it is it's a secure blockchain, but probably Algonand users and don't have doesn't have the incentives to run a node or to promote Algorand. Probably something like that it could be. I want to say also if 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 anyone wants to speak can uh, can say the uh, raise your hand and I, I I invite you to speak. So this is an open talk, uh, so everyone can be part of this conversation. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, I think about the Algoana DAO, it, it's like you have different DAOs on Algoana. Yeah, so that's it's something um, I think that's kind of evolved quite naturally. So um, it started um, at the beginning of this year in January. Um, I'd been approached by a project called um, XP Network. They were building an NFT bridge. Um, and they kind of came to us as like a big NFT project on Algorand. They said, look, we're going to do this. You'll be able to bridge your NFTs from Algorand and take them from the chain. So I was like, okay, cool. It's, it's really interesting, but we weren't minting anything at the time. And I didn't really know how we'd use it or how it would fit in. But I kind of told our community about this conversation I'd had and kind of some of them explored the technology and we kind of said well what if we all came together and we were to as a community purchase an NFT from another chain with a view that one day once this uh, bridge goes live we'll be able to actually bring it to Algorand so there's you know there's a little bit of discussion around this for uh, maybe like over over a weekend say a couple of days and it was clear there was an appetite for it. So we set up a Google form. We said, right, who's interested in contributing to this? Um, we want to go and try and buy an NFT that was created by Yuga Labs, like part of the Board 8 collection. Um, uh -huh. There was, a, you know, bearing in mind at the time, we only had maybe like a few hundred members because the collection of Algorand is only 489 NFTs. We raised over a... Uh, 80,000 US dollars in about 24 hours. So we set up a multi-sig, people could send contributions there. Um, and then we went, we went over to OpenSea, we bought um, an M2 Mutant 8. It was, I think it was about 20, 25, or oh, I'd have to check um, the numbers, but it was somewhere like 18 ETH or something at the time, which, you know, it was a serious amount of money. But as an exercise, it really demonstrated to uh, us as a community um, what, well, a few things. One, that was, there was definitely an appetite for this kind of collective organization of people together to pull capital and to go and do things that they definitely couldn't achieve alone. So by working together, we were able to do things that were definitely out of reach on an individual basis. And two, that it was actually like, even though we don't have a lot of the necessary DAO tooling in place, it was actually quite easy to do. You know, we've kind of you know, Joe can say that we've done it with kind of like sticky tape and uh, blue tack to hold it all together. But, you know, just by doing things like Discord votes, having Google Google Docs that are public for all of the community, you know, the fact that it's on a blockchain, you can it's easy to see where contributions have come from. So there's no ambiguity over who's contributed what and what their share should be. Um, so, yeah, we started with that one um, NFT purchase. And the way we've kind of continued to evolve it from there is, you know, people within the community, uh, they can put a proposal forward and say, look, we, I, I'd really like to see the community go and do this. Um, we've developed a framework for how they should structure the proposals. So, you know, like by doing it a few times, we worked out, okay, you need to be very clear about what the objective is, what the timeline is, you know, are we, you know, if it's an NFT, are we going to buy it to hold over a long period? Are we going to buy it with a view to flipping it in a few months? So I understand. Worked out these, yeah. these kind of kinks, but there's no... Um, the, 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 holder, NFT, one, there's, the NFT is, in, is on Ethereum? Or, or you move the, the, the NFT to Algorand? What are, what are you planning yeah, to do? Up, 
that one's still on Ethereum. Um, we since then we've bought another couple and we've kind of flipped those. Um, but yeah, there was kind of people didn't have a, a great deal of confidence in this NFT bridge, so it ended up being that everyone felt it was safer to leave it in um, a Gnosis multi-sig wallet over on Ethereum, which is where it stayed. I agree, absolutely. And it just seemed kind of like the, the bridge, once we kind of dived into it a little bit more, um, it was quite a centralized approach to bridging. So it would be locked up by a smart contract that this company would control on the Ethereum side, and then they'd reissue a token on the Algorand side. So it was definitely... We, while we didn't follow through with that, it provided a really great catalyst um, for us as a community to start exploring, I guess, these kind of group investments. I understand. Then, this is very now... similar than Razdao, Benji. I didn't knew this. I didn't know this. Um, we started the same way. Uh, you know that I'm from Argentina. Also, the, co the, the other co-founder of Razdao, Diego Torres, he also is from Argentina. And what happened to us is that we saw a sale of, of one space bath of one mil, more than $1 million. I think it was September or October, the last year that it happened. And what we started to think is, okay, we want uh, to that people from Latin America, from Africa and from Asia to join Cardano and blockchain in general you know we want to onboard people from these countries but these people won't be available to buy a uh, blue chip because uh, you know that for example the salary of a doctor here in Argentina I always say the same thing but it's something to example to give an example uh, is less than 1000 US dollars a doctor so for people in Latin America it's uh, impossible to make to have a a wallet with multiple uh, blue chip NFTs. So when we create RatsDAO was with the idea to give uh, all the people, uh, but specific people that don't have many economical resources, um, exposure to Cardano blue chip NFTs. Uh, and we started the same way, uh, minting some NFTs and buying one space bats and that was uh, December the last year. Uh, then it started a, a crazy, a crazy thing that was start. We started buying more space, but more space, but climates. We have one berry, which is like the Ethereum rocks on Cardano, the berry collection created by Alessandro Berry. That there are only 100 berries. Ratsdao has one. Uh, we paid uh, more than 100,000 ADA at that moment and uh, we collected like 500 uh, NFT blue chips uh, now we have a treasury valued on 1.5 1.7 million ADA is one of the uh, most important collections on Cardano blockchain uh, there, are, there is a we have a, a, many pieces of history of, of Cardano blockchain. We have a climate, space paths, the berry, and pixel, and many other projects. I then knew that you also collect uh, funds to, to make purchase of, of NFTs. Maybe you can have a wallet on Cardano and buy a rat with a multi-sig. <laughs> that would be really cool. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, that's, as a, as a community, it's kind of been really interesting exploring these different NFT purchases. And it's kind of, for us, it's evolved in, the, in some different ways where we recently had um, kind of like some NFT, or not NFT startups, but um, like kind of Algorand projects, which were kind of, they were launching and they were going through their fundraising process and we've started as a community to be approached by them and they said would the Goanna DAO be interested in participating in like the seed round um, of like this fundraise for this project so we've we've got um, some of our community have, have done that um, and they've taken part in these rounds so they've got um, exposure to this kind of like series A or um, seed round of of a project again and i think it's just another example of 
you know, like you're saying, like how by working together we can we can achieve things that individually we'd never never get the opportunity to do. Um, and I think that's one of the really interesting dynamics that um, has just opened up as a result of crypto and through these NFT communities. Yeah, and, and you learn a lot because, um, for example, you don't know about the project and some other member of it will start um, making some comments about an, any uh, project that you don't know and you uh, learn about different things that you may never uh, what you're interested for example play to earn metaverse uh, DeFi is very cool to be part of of a DAO I am part of besides Ras DAO I am member of of diff, other different DAOs on Cardano and on Ethereum and it's a great experience because you learn a lot it's amazing so can I can I ask is it is um I guess like, you know, Algorand and Cardano are both in a lot of ways kind of like early or newer kind of blockchain technologies and some of the more established chains, certainly like Ethereum. So are you still having to do some of your DAO activities kind of in a off-chain way? Um, like I know we're still kind of lacking some of the DAO tooling that, I mean, we've, we've been told hopefully it's coming online soon um, and we're going to have better access to... Uh, easier kind of on-chain voting for NFT holders and um, that kind of thing. Is it a similar picture currently on Cardano? Yes, we don't have uh, all the DAO tooling. Uh, so we are extremely early. Uh, we started Rats DAO as the first NFT DAO on December. Uh, by the moment that we started Rats DAO, they, they, they weren't any tools. Uh, we made a partnership with a DAO, which is a DAO that build that they are building tools for DAOs to, to, to in order to develop DAOs on Cardano. But is uh, very early. Uh, now there is a there is a multi sig wallet. By the moment that we start, we we didn't have a multi sig wallet. Uh, is round table it has uh, three months and now there are there are two platforms one is some on platform zoom on platform and uh, the other is clarity uh, protocol which is also a DAO and they are building uh, platforms to create uh, DAOs but it's very early is 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 uh, very early. We vote on Discord. Uh, we have a vote that uh, weights how many NFTs you have, and uh, you have one vote per NFT in your wallet. Uh, and all that also can be made with a fungible token in case your DAO is governed by a fungible token. Uh, we have we have something that is very interesting on Cardano. Uh, that I like a lot, uh, which is Catalyst. You know that all blockchain has uh, like a grants mechanism. I, I know that Algorand ha also has a, a, a grants mechanism. And in the case of in Cardano, uh, we have like a decentralized protocol to uh, give funds, which the, the name is Catalyst. Uh, I, the, we are currently we are on fund number nine, uh, and these catalyst funds are every three months or two months. And what happens is like there is emission of new ADA on the blockchain, and this is to fund new projects. So if you, for example, you are a developer and uh, you want to build tools for DAOs on Cardano. For example, you have a very cool idea about uh, an on-chain voting, for example. You can go to the section about DAOs on uh, that there is, for example, a challenge uh, to build tools for DAOs on Cardano. You go there, you make your proposal, and the community votes. Uh, you, 
we in order to vote you must have more than five, more than 500 ada on your wallet and you vote the project for example that you like it's not easy to build on cardano because uh, cardano is very secure the programming language is haskell and plutus so uh, one of the things that uh, are very hard on Cardano is to find developers and to build uh, smart contracts. Cardano has smart contracts since uh, Alonso Harford that happened on September last year. Uh, so everything is very early on Cardano. Uh, we are early on crypto in general, but on Cardano we are very early. Uh, what Cardano has is a very big community, an amazing community, uh, with millions of other of uh, Cardano supporters that believe in the projects um, that are here for the long term. You know, I, I see the same about uh, Algorand. That Algorand also has a community. It's not a, a ghost chain with no one, with no users. I have seen that Algorand. Is on its early stages. I think it's uh, 2018 that Algorand is on mainnet. I I, I don't, don't know if it's I am wrong, but you also have a, a very big community, and I think that that is very important because uh, venture capitals can go and then they can leave. But if you have users, if you have a community, if you have people that believe in the projects. Uh, everything is possible, you know. Yeah, no, I think you, you're spot on there. Um, I think, you know, coming back to this idea of catalyst um, and the way that works, I I really like that decentralized approach. Um, we do have kind of grants programs run by the Algorand Foundation um, here on Algorand, but. I think having a um, mechanism where the community and the core users, the people who are kind of using Cardano on a daily basis, uh, who are super active, like giving them a voice and them having the ability to decide, right, one, like what's needed and two, like which projects get funded, I think is, that's really um, something that we could definitely learn from. Like our system at the moment is, um, perhaps got a little bit of criticism because it is kind of managed um, by the foundation. So it is centralized and it is con kind of controlled. Um, and sometimes there's a little bit of a disconnect between maybe the projects that have got funding and then the projects that people actually want to see get built or, you know, projects that perhaps have, people have already built, but we'd love to see them get some additional funding and support to help them kind of elevate and take them to the next level. So I think that's that's a really uh, interesting way to approach it. And I'd love to see it kind of be adopted more um, over on Algorand. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, there are whales, but because the, the whales have the other. So whales have a, a, a more voting power than a user that only has, for example, 600 uh, ADA. But it's a, a very transparent process in which you can go and see uh, each proposal, uh, the team, uh, how much uh, money the, the, the team is asking, what are uh, the team is using the funds for, uh, what are they are going to build, um, the time, everything. is everything very transparent and I, I am very... Uh, glad about that on Cardano. I, I think many people on Cardano doesn't know how uh, how democratic is the the grants program on Cardano in comparison uh, with other blockchains because all other blockchains uh, have the same mechanism where the foundation decides uh, where to allocate the funds. But in these cases, it's the community. So I think this is this is very important and. One of the things that Algorand has also is that it's easier to, to code. I think it's a Py, Ply, uh, how is the, the ling, programming language? Py, Ply, so, Pytil. So it's a, it's a, a version of, yeah, of 
of teal that's been adapted and made more accessible. So that's Pi teal, and there's also another language called Reach. Um, so there's kind of two options um, that kind of allow people to to come in. And there's um, again, I'm not I'm not te like overly technical or a developer, so I can't speak too much. But I know there's quite a lot of resources and, and tooling to help uh, onboard people um, as developers and get them to grips. One thing. Um, I kind of wanted to ask, um, obviously you, you guys uh, have been running the DAO for a while, um, and I think it's something that I've seen on other chains, and that's how do you encourage um, like participation? Is it, do you kind of have mechanisms in place to kind of to get people or reward people um, to kind of take an active role in, in voting? Um, or do you find that you have a small number of very active members who are really motivated and then there's quite a few people who are perhaps a bit more passive um, and they just, they're just happy to kind of hold the tokens and kind of cruise along without participating too much? Yeah, it happens. Uh, we have 4, 000, almost 4,000 wallets. So there is 4,000 people uh, that has 1, 2, 10, 100 rats nfts uh, so it's a lot of people and what's happened is that uh, you can't ask the people to be active all the time because maybe people has families jobs um, maybe they, they are involved in some other projects that they liked more for example maybe they are involved in i don't know the their birds or a space but community or any other community that probably is they, they are main community, but they like the approach of RATSDAO and they have a RAT, but they don't have the time to stay on Discord, investigate, read, be very active. So for from one side, you have like when, when all the projects have passive holders, and I think that is very that is fine and, and you have to respect that that uh, because uh, uh, it's something that is um, that is okay and then you have active members we have uh, we have on discord we have uh, 7000 uh, discord members that are real because we have a vote that eliminates uh, every week all the fake account and the scammers and everyone who is not registered the the vote uh, eliminates every, kick off uh, everyone for uh, who is not registered and uh, in the polls we have voting we have many polls uh, and we have for example from 1000 votes the 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 lowest uh, participation to 2,000, 3,000, the, the polls that the, has more uh, votes. Um, and what we are, are doing since uh, about a month is something similar than Catalyst in this case, which is creating uh, working groups is something that is uh, we are just uh, at the beginning of this but uh, working groups in we for example uh, administrative working groups tokenomics by different because here uh, i also want to say something else which is that in daos it's not that uh, there are no leaderships there are leaderships on DAOs, and there is people who is more committed, or uh, they has more knowledge, or uh, they are more interested about something. So there are leaders. So, uh, but the thing is that these leaderships and this participation is more fluent, and it's not like it's one leader about everything who decides everything. Is in some things there are some leaders, some in some other things there are other leaders, and it's permissionless, so everyone can be part of a Rats DAO, and you don't need the permission of no one to go to secondary market, JPEG store, to buy a rat, 
register your wallet on Discord and be part of RATSDAO. You can do it. Uh, and for these working groups, we have uh, incentives on our own governance token, which is a fungible token uh, that is RAT token. So these working groups has <clears throat> 1 million uh, RAT uh, over a maximum amount of 100 million RAT. This these working groups has 1 million RAT and people are incentivized uh, to be paid in RAT. In the future, RATSDAO also has ADA. So in the future, these working groups, if the DAO decides, for example, can also manage ADA. And you can create bounties and grants for the DAO that can be paid in ADA. For example, imagine we need a, a new website. Okay, there is a grant uh, and uh, people can apply and can say, hey, I designed this website. I have these ideas for the RATS DAO. We have a beautiful website, so we are not planning to redesign our website. This, this is just an example. But imagine this is a, a possibility in the future, for example. We need a redesign of the website, okay, and, and a website developer can come and say, hey, I can do this website and I will need 1,000 US dollars. Okay, the DAO can vote and uh, can assign uh, this amount of money uh, for uh, someone in this case, for example. Uh, but I, I think the experience of being part of a DAO is, is, is incredible because you learn a, a lot of things you learn about DeFi, about NFTs, about politics, about how to build consensus about th around things, how to work with other people. Um, it's really impressive. And I think we are extremely early on DAOs. And I really think that DAOs uh, yeah, are going to, to change the, the world and are going to change the work. Uh, how do we work? How do we live? I think we, we, we don't realize the, the, the potential that DAOs uh, has, you know? That's awesome, man. That's, that's really inspiring with kind of everything that you guys are doing with the DAO. And it's certainly something that I think there's a lot that we can learn from. And I can see it. I'm going to be coming back to you with heaps of questions like after this and like over the next like <laughs> few months of like kind of like, you know, trying to, you know, yeah, just learn from your experience of things that we can implement um, because that's really, you know, part of my vision for what we want to do with the Goanna project is to build one of the, the most well-funded, empowered communities um, of, an, uh, well, certainly the most empowered NFT community, but also just a general community on, on Algorand that can really start to have a, a really positive impact um, both on the chain and um kind of environmentally and socially in the real world as well so yeah man super inspiring what you're doing and um, that's that's super cool i know there's i'm just kind of looking through the audience so we've got a few few uh faces i see from the the algorand community so if they're not kind of familiar with um rats DAO, can you just give us a breakdown and it's like how many rats there are um, what the kind of current floor prices are. So like if they were interested in jumping in and becoming part of the DAO, how they do that. Um, I know you mentioned the JPEG store there before. Yes, we have a beautiful website on Cardano that is JPEG store. Uh, it's a smart contract uh, website to purchase uh, NFTs. And you have to look for Rats DAO. I think the floor is 65 ADA or something like that. Uh, there are 10,000 NFTs. Uh, and there are two kinds of RATS memberships uh, on NFT. One uh, are the governance NFTs, and the other are the Genesis NFTs. I think for the Genesis floor is 300, something like that, ADA. Ada is 50 cents and I don't know, maybe some 
someone for the Cardano community can also help me, but I really like Namey Wallet. I also really like CC Vault Wallet. Now is Eternal Wallet. Uh, also, you can use Yoroi Wallet. Yoroi Wallet is um, like uh, not very popular right now, but I really like Namey Wallet and CC Vault Wallet and also Flint Wallet. I think the best wallet on Cardano not currently is Eternal, CC Vault. And you can and you can buy a rat on, on secondary market on JPEG store and then you can go to our Discord and verify your wallet with a bot that is there, created by a staking pool operators. Uh, and that's all. Uh, we also have a, a profile picture um, collection, which is called is called One Sis Collection, that are very beautiful, uh, made by, by an amazing by an, an amazing artist called uh, Small Eleven World uh, from the USA, which is a beautiful collection. Uh, and Algoana Flores. Very, very high. I don't know if someone for Ratsdao can afford uh, uh, an Algoana uh, uh, NFT because it's like 9,000 Alg or something like that, no? Yeah, so like, that's part of our goal, I guess, with the new collection is um, the original collection is very small. Cause, like when we launched the NFT ecosystem on our ground was, was super small, so it didn't make sense to release like a huge 10,000 piece NFT collection. So we ended up releasing 489. Um, we got 489 from some good old fashioned crypto meme numbers. So if you take 420 and you add 69, you get 489. So it's, it's a pretty small collection and that's definitely helped contribute to to that sort of floor price, which has made it quite inaccessible for a lot of people. But, but excuse our... me, with this, this tiny small collection, you may like four million dollars in secondary market sales yes yeah that's correct that's impressive we've we've done some some really good volume on the secondary which is is really exciting but where i was going is we're we're working at the moment towards releasing our second collection which is due to come out in the next couple of weeks um and that's going to be a much larger collection it's going to be five thousand five hundred and fifty five nfts and the goal there is one, we can grow our community so we can onboard um, a much larger number of members, but we can also do it so it's going to be a lot more accessible um, and a lot more affordable. So the, the mint price for that's going to be 222 algo, which at today's prices is about like 60 or 70 US dollars. So it's a lot, a lot lower kind of like barrier to entry than buying one of the original Goanna collections. Amazing. But it's not uh, if 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 the it's like there will be an OG collection, and then uh, a second collection more with more NFTs. Exactly. Yes. But the the the, the current Algoanas will will I think will will keep their their value because it is uh, a very scarce collection. Exactly. And I think as you know, as the there are, with it being a much smaller collection, it would be easier to to offer kind of greater utility to the the original holders. And I think this is something else I I don't know if you you tackle it with Rats Dow, but we're kind of looking at um as we kind of formally establish a Goanna DAO, you know, do we offer greater voting power? to the OG collection as opposed to the larger collection um, as one way to kind of reward those those holders of the higher floor price NFTs. Um, and one of the things we are thinking about is that you, in the early stages, to hold kind of like an active role within the DAO or, you know, to be able to make proposals and that kind of thing, that it would have to come from someone who held a piece from the original collection. Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to kind of get your thoughts and feedback on that. Um, 
I can also see we've got um, one of the, like a Goanna holder up here, Dale. Um, he's kind of requested to speak, so I don't know if he's waiting. Yeah, yeah. He wants to jump in. Dale's... Um, hey, Dale. Actually, hey. He's an incredible artist in his own right. Um, everyone should go and check out some of Dale's videos. The, the shit he does, like, blows my mind. Um, I've never seen anyone who can draw with two hands at the same time. Um, it sounds crazy, but, like, he legit, he does it. Um, I don't know how he does, uh, but, like, the dude does some just freakishly mad stuff. Um, so I'd, I'd encourage everyone to jump onto Dale's Twitter feed. Uh, I think I saw a video he posted yesterday, um, just kind of, of a time lapse of his hands working, um, and it's just phenomenal. So, yeah, everyone go and check that out. But um, how are you, Dale? Great to um, have you up here, buddy. Hey, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I just thought I'd just come up and say good day. Um, and yeah, I'm repping the Goanna as my PFP. Um, it was like I've always wanted a Goanna, and um, and it was like my biggest purchase as well because <laughs> I wasn't like one of the lucky ones that could get it um, real cheap, however long ago. And so, um, yeah, I just ended up picking up one and. Now that's probably going to be my PFP for a very long time. So uh, I'm really happy with it. And always love what you're doing too, Goanna. Like, um, you know, I think you've really, like, you're helping pave the way for um, a lot of, like, new tech and just the types of content that um, that we could have in the future as well. Like, you're one of the first people to kind of really push it, I think, which is awesome to see. And it's also great that you're an Australian like me too. <laughs> so there's a there's sort of little... Uh, maybe camaraderie or something. I don't know there. Like, but um, but no, thanks. Yeah, um, I just love making art, and so thanks for the shout out. Um, um, yeah, I love doing the two handed art and all my three D stuff. I kind of just came up to say good day, really, and uh, I just sort of saw the space and thought, of, yeah, say good day, see how you're going. Um, it's cool to see Cardano and Algoan, uh, Alga doing a like combined space. I have been hit up a few a bit more by like Cardano people about maybe like considering doing um a collection on on there, um, so I'm like get, doing some research um a bit more about that space, um but yeah my main thing is just time because I'm a solo artist like I don't want to spread myself too thin so I'm just like researching it a little bit here and there and maybe I'll do like a little mini collection over there just to test the waters, but um. But yeah, no. So it's cool. It's nice to meet you, rats. And I um, hope you're good. But yeah. Great, man. Uh, no, one of the things I want, I always like to say is that rats Dao, because people say, why your name is rats Dao? Uh, is because of, it's like a Charles Hoskinson is the creator of rats Dao. And when a Bitcoin maximalist said that Cardano is a shed and that stuff, he retweeted and he said, I think I am, that makes me the king of the rats. And Charles Hoskinson had, has a staking pool on Cardano. The name of this staking pool is rats. And in his Twitter account, uh, he, 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 he describes his, himself as the king of the rats. So that's why the name that is that's rats brilliant. are something like not very cute, you know, but it represents the spirit of Rats Dao because it's like the Dao of the common people on Cardano. This is not an elitist group or something like that. It's a Dao where everyone in Cardano can, can, can join. Uh, it's for everyone, you know. I was going to ask, does, does Charles Hoskinson not have um, a rat? Is he a, a part of the DAO? No, no. I don't know if he knows about rats DAO. Uh, probably he knows, but no, no. Um, I don't know. I think he doesn't hold no NFTs. Uh, it's like he's not uh, involved on, on, on NFTs because maybe he he can like uh, pump the price imagine if he holds one nft the, the price can pump a lot he was part of we have 
Uh, one of the, the top projects on Cardano is Climate, Climates, uh, Climation. Uh, Ratsdao has uh, 100 Climation NFTs, and we have uh, like 125 plots on a metaverse that Climation has, and with Snoop Dogg. The artist, uh, so he he was part of a Twitter space with with climates we and Snoop Dogg, and he's a, a supporter now of, of climates project because of this metaverse with with Snoop Dogg. But it's like he's not involved on the NFT ecosystem, and I think that is I think that that is fair, you know, because he lives like them like a free market without his intervention in, in the NFT case. Yeah, does, I think that... <laughs> does Silvio Micali holds uh, an algoana? No. Um, <laughs> I, I did try. We actually, um, when we were building out our collection uh, last last year, we actually had the rarest, kind of the, the most valuable piece in there is actually a homage to Silvio. So the Silvio Goanna is the rarest and most prized of all the, the Goannas in the collection. I did actually try and make some inquiries to see whether we could just get him to just kind of rock it his, his, his profile picture for a little while before we released it, um, just to drive a bit of excitement. I think we auctioned that one off and 100% of the sale of that went to the, the tree fund anyway. So it wasn't like we were trying to pump for our own bags, but. Um, yeah, I couldn't quite get that one over the line and make that happen with, with Silvio. Um, we did actually do um, a custom NFT, uh, which actually was minted this week, and that went to Sean Ford. And Sean's the um, acting CEO of the Algorand Inc. at the moment. Um, so we, we did actually make an NFT for him. He approached us a little while ago, and they'd had a... I'm not sure how it came about, but the team at Algorand, um, they all had kind of like a different spirit animal. Um, and his spirit animal was the hawk. So he'd asked us if we could create um, a hawk NFT that he could use as his kind of profile picture. So we've, we've done that. It was a one-off for him. Um, and we're not sure at this stage what we're going to do with, with that character, whether it will become part of the, the Goaniverse or not um, in the future. Okay. You have a dog. Yeah, you can hear the, hear the dog barking <laughs> in the background. Um, but yeah, I was, I was going to ask, I was interested um, with Rats DAO. Um, do you guys have a policy where obviously you're, you're buying NFTs and you're building this collection? Do you, as a community, do you look to, you know, do you f try and trade some of these NFTs? So you're kind of building up kind of this treasury of ADA as well? So if uh, you buy a buy an NFT, it increases a lot in value. Would you then sell it on the secondary market, and then you've got more funds that you can reinvest into buying other NFTs, or is everything strictly a buy and hold, and you're just creating this kind of museum or archive of um, Cardano history? Uh, well, uh, at the moment uh, we haven't sold, uh, we didn't sold uh, sell any NFT. It is a possibility. Um, it's like we started uh, with blue chips, you know, buying only blue chips uh, that we think that in the future will raise in value. I think it's, uh, for example, Space Bats Floor, Space Bats is the first 10,000 NFT collection on Cardano. Uh, Space Bats is an amazing project with uh, Alessandro Berri, the creator. He's uh, one of the most important developers on Cardano. Uh, he's a great contributor for the entire ecosystem. Uh, for example, he created Naming Wallet, the wallet that I, I was talking about. Uh, all his contributions are open source. He's a great builder of Cardano community. And Space Bats is the first 10,000 NFT collection. 
the floor of space, but I think now is 4,000 AIDA, is 2,000 US dollars. Uh, I think that in the future, space bats will have a lot of value because of the community, because of the creator, because of the developer, and because of it is the first profile picture collection on Cardano. The same about the berry that, that, that I told you. So it's like we buy NFTs that we want to keep forever, but it is possible if someone makes a proposal to sell one of the NFTs. Uh, it's like it's under the, the, the possibility is under the table. What happened with this is like uh, we have 1.7 million ADA on NFTs. So I think that uh, we achieved a, a massive treasury. And I personally think, and I am making a proposal to create like an investment fund on RATSDAO. For example, with uh, we have some liquidity. Uh, for example, 35,000 ADA, which is less than 20,000 US dollars, can be for this group of uh, like an investment. So th this investment can be another wallet in which with this amount of ADA, the Razzlao can't mint new projects, can flip new projects and uh, use this wallet as an investment to grow in ADA, you know, thinking of on flipping NFTs or minting NFTs because Razzlao has never minted a collection. We only have like top collections on Cardano uh, and we never minted a new collection. So with this fund, our idea, uh, my proposal that can be voted or not, but the idea is, for example, to mint projects and to hold some NFTs and, set and flip the others. It is a possibility. Uh, I think what is uh, amazing about DAOs is can that DAOs change all the time. So there are uh, so many options. Uh, so yeah, but the, the what we have by at the moment is the idea is to to keep these NFTs because they are part of the of Cardano history, you know. They are very important.